So it was the March 1988 issue of Guitar Player Magazine with some guy named Chuck Berry on the cover of it. Uh, and as some of you folks who are in and around the same age group as I am, uh, you'll remember how Guitar Player Magazine used to have these floppy sound page records uh, inside of them where sometimes it was a lesson, sometimes it was just a song performance or an ad on the B-side for whatever company wanted to pay them <laughs> to advertise their product. Um, I had a stack of those and absolutely loved them. Um, but this particular one was a piece of music called Eugene's Trick Bag and I was wondering what that was all about back, uh, I would have been, I guess, around 14 years old at the time or 13 years old at the time. And I had not seen the movie Crossroads up at this point yet, but uh, this just blew my mind as it probably did many people when they first heard this piece of music, Eugene's Trick Bag. So if you haven't already guessed, uh, in this episode of Dialing In, I'm gonna take a look at getting somewhere in the ballpark anyways of Steve Vai's really cool tone on that uh, Eugene's trick bag um, duel between uh, Eugene and Jack in the, uh, in the movie Crossroads, which has become quite the uh, classic uh, guitar piece. Um, you'll have to excuse my playing on this. I kind of, I, you know, I, I spent many years, not many years, but many years ago, I spent a lot of time uh, you know, kind of woodshedding this piece. I haven't played it in years and I kind of just dug into the memory banks this morning and, and flew through it a bit. So I don't really know the whole piece perfectly uh, right now, but I'll, you know, probably enough that we can hear the tones um, of it. So, um, yeah, so what I did is I did a two snapshot preset covering both uh, Eugene's tone and uh, Jack's tone. Um, and it's in the ballpark, you know. Um, at first I started off using my telly for Eugene's tone and it was working out good, but then I decided to change over to my Yamaha Pacifica 612 here so that I could do um, both tones on one guitar. So for Eugene's tone, I'm using the neck, neck single coil pickup. These are all Seymour Duncan pickups. And I should know the models, right? And I don't, but <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a little note to, to learn the model uh, models of the pickups in my guitars. And the bridge pickup I used for Jack's tone. All right, so let's dive over to HX Edit and take a look and see what I did. So I actually used two different amps. So we'll start at the end like normal here. Um, for uh, most presets that I do, I use the LA Studio Comp at the end. This time, slightly different settings, peak reduction of four. Gain of five, mix it 100%. That's just my little uh, squashy mastering compressor at the end. Squashy is a, I don't know if that's a word, but um, EQ, uh, there was a couple things going on here depending on the snapshots. Um, for Eugene's tone, all of the basic EQs are, uh, settings are the same except for the high cut, which changes between Eugene and Jack's tone. So low frequency at 120 hertz with a Q of 7.8, I boosted 3 dB. Uh, mid frequency, I pulled that way down to 125 hertz, um, Q of 1.9 and boosted to 6 dB. A lot of people might wonder why I, you know, do two so close together, but I was just going for a particular shape in the bottom end that I, I play around with these until I just sort of get my ear tuned into to where I kind of want it. So uh, the low end on this is pretty interesting, I found, but uh, so hopefully I got close to it. But those are the settings I used. High frequency at five kilohertz with a Q of 1.5 boost at 6 dB. The low cut stays consistent between the snapshots at 140 hertz. And the high cut on Eugene's tone is at 10 kilohertz, but on Jack's tone is at 13 kilohertz. Okay, so we'll go back to there. Um, I put on a room verb. Uh, there was a fairly big verb from what I could hear on this, uh, probably because it's mimicking them playing in a club, right? And it was probably added after the fact or in the studio um, to give it the, the effect of being in a club and a bigger room sound. So I went with the room reverb, decay of 7.2, pre-delay of 15 milliseconds, and a mix of 47%. Uh, the delay doesn't even need to be on here because it's not used at all. I just used my template and I just forgot to take it off. So you guys can just X that out if you don't, uh, don't need it. Um, Let's come back to the low and high shove. Let's look at what I did with the amps. So for Eugene's tone, I went with Matchstick Channel 2 amp. Uh, I have no idea what was used on this. I didn't even bother to check. I just thought I would use my ears, pick stuff that I thought would work, right? So uh, the Matchstick Channel 2 sounded pretty good to my ears. And uh, the Channel 2 drive 
was set to 10, tone at one, cut at zero, presence and master and channel volume all up to 10. And I don't believe I touched the deeper functions. And that was matched up with its 212 match G25 cabinet with a 121 ribbon one inch off, okay? I found though that that didn't give me quite enough gain that I, I wanted. So I put an air apparent pedal on it with the gain set at seven, tone at 2.2, presence at five, clipping mode, uh, overdrive, gain mod normal, level at 6.2 and voltage at nine volts, okay? Um, back to the uh, low and high shelf now. I took all the frequencies below 200 hertz, boosted them 8.2 dB, took all the frequencies above two kilohertz, boosted them 9.8 dB on this snapshot, okay? So that's basically what we are hearing on this tone. So let's do this. Let's turn off the overdrive, the EQ, uh, the reverb, the EQ at the end. I'll leave the compressor on. And this is the basic sort of tone we had here. Okay, that's the first little bit of my butchering that. Um, all right, so let's turn our EQ on, see how that changes it. All right, uh, bring our reverb in. Kind of here, it gives it that spacious room sound like the original had, right? We'll bring uh, our high and low shelf back in. One thing I'm mentioning here, uh, I, like I mentioned before, I am on the neck pickup on the Pacifica, right? So that gives this tone here. Now, the only thing I found I'm missing, like I said, it was a little bit too low of gain, but I had kind of maxed this out with the master and the channel drive. So I brought in the air apparent. So. So we bring that in. Okay, I don't know if that was even close. Pretty sloppy. I'm more like uh, Jack Butler playing it. But yeah, again, like I didn't have time to practice this. So that's kind of going by memory. There's also all that, those cool arpeggio things going on in the beginning. Something, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, really cool stuff though. Some really challenging licks going on those cool arpeggio things. Really big jumps, right? And then these uh, cool diminished things. Something like that. Very, very close, I guess, hopefully. Anyways, gets the idea of the tone across. Um, oh yeah, and then there's also the little. Anyways, that's uh, how that all started. It's all coming, coming back to me. So, so that's it for Eugene's tone. I hope you guys like that. Now, what I did when I go over to Snapshot 2 for Jack's tone is I get rid of the distortion and that amp, and I go over to a Placator Dirty model. Uh, drive at 7.4, bass at 1.5, mid at 5, treble presence, channel volume all cranked to 10. Master at 7.5 and all of these sort of extra functions off and the deeper functions not touched. 
And I paired that up with a 412 Greenback 25 with a 160 ribbon mic one inch back. Uh, I add in the low and high, another low and high shelf where I just boost all the frequencies above three kilohertz by a further five dB. Get a little more sizzle out of it. Keep this one the same. Reverb stays the same. And this EQ changes from Eugene's tone with a high cut at 10 kilohertz for Jack's tone up to 13 kilohertz. Everything else stays the same though. And so that I played on the bridge pickup and that one sounded like this. Whatever he does. Uh, I can't remember that lick. So anyways, that's a, that's a blast to do. I hope you guys like those tones. These can be used for a lot of different things. However that goes too. I don't know, just seeing if it works on any other vice. So it kind of sounds cool. But I really like this Eugene's tone too with the single coil pickup for. So fun, fun stuff. Um, even the bridge pickup sounds kind of cool. Something like that. Anyways, like I said, I apologize for the playing. I would have been a, a, a good fill-in for Jack Butler for all the places that had to uh, mess that part up. So anyways, I hope you guys like the tones. I'll have these up on custom tone uh, by the time the video goes up. And try it with some different guitars. Like I said, I used the Tele on Eugene's tone, which sounded really cool on the middle position. It sounds kind of cool here on the bridge. It sounds good on the lead. So th this isn't just, this. these presets aren't, uh, or this preset story and these snapshots aren't just for Eugene's trick bag. You might be able to get some use out of this in a lot of other situations as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video and share it if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll be back soon with uh, some more content. All right, thanks again for tuning in guys. Ciao for now.